Welcome back. In this step, we'll create a simple Java project and add a unit test for it. So let's get started. The way you can create a new project, file new Java project, or you can go to J file new other and select Java project from there. So I'll say file new Java project, and I'll call this J unit in five steps. You can go ahead and click finish. Once the project is created, I'll go ahead and create a simple Java class. So I'll create a class. I'll want to call this class as math, actually my math, and I would put it in the package com dot in 28 minutes dot j unit and I'll say finish. So in this math, I would want to quickly create a method which would sum everything up. So I would want to create a sum method. Uh, it accepts a set of numbers. So I'll create an array of numbers. And what the sum method does is it would loop around everything. It would sum them up. So I'll create a int sum sum plus is equal to i and return sum. That's it. It's a very simple method. It does not do a lot of logic as such. It's not initialized. Let's put it to zero. That's it. Now, I have implemented this sum method, but now how can I be sure that the sum method is working fine? What I will do in these kind of scenarios is I would write a new unit test. One important thing is the source folder. So I'll create a new source folder. I would want to actually separate unit tests from the source code. It's not a good practice to actually put both unit tests and the code in the same folder. So what I'll do is before this, I would start with creating a new source folder. So I'll say right click new source folder and I would name it as test. And then I would start creating my test case. So then JUnit test case and I would call it my math test. The package name should be com dot in 28 minutes dot JUnit the same as the class. So the same as my math except that this is called my math test. And then I would click finish. It says JUnit is not on the build path. So do you want to add it? Yep. I would want to add it. Please do that. And now you can see that the source code is in the source folder. The test is in test folder. So this separation you should always maintain. Your source code should be in a different folder. Compare your test code. Your source code will be deployed to production. Your test code, you don't want it to be deployed to production. You'd want to keep it really separate. That's why we created a new source folder and created the test class in here. If you look at this specific test, which is created, you'd see that there is an add test annotation around the test method. It's org JUnit test. The add test annotation is what is used to signify that something is a unit test. So when there is an add test annotation, it means this method contains a unit test. So now if you run this test, run as JUnit test, this would fail because here we are calling the fail method. So we are calling a fail method saying not implemented. This test is not really implemented yet. So if I remove that and I would actually run the test right now, you would see that the test succeeds. So one of the important lessons of JUnit is the fact that absence of failure is success. Even though I didn't write any test here, it succeeds because the way JUnit framework works is that unless any of the checks fail, then the test is a success. So even though there are no checks, absence of failure is success. So if there are no failures, then your test has succeeded. If the code has not thrown an exception or all the checks have passed, then your test would succeed. So in this step, what we did is we quickly created a new project. We created a new unit test, my math test. We saw that it was succeeding. We got a JUnit green bar, which is really famous. So this, whatever you have seen here is called green bar. It's a success bar. We have not really written a test yet. So we did not call the sum method and have not done anything with it yet. We would do that in the next step.